Our next speaker is someone who uh, really needs no introduction, particularly his expertise and his efforts for decades on Palestine. Dr. Daoud Abdullah is the director of the Middle East Monitor and author of several books, including Engaging the World, the Making of Hamas's Foreign Policy in 2021. From 2003 to, till 2011, Dr. Daoud Abdullah was a part-time lecturer at Birkbeck College, University of London. And from 1990 to 1993, he lectured at the University of Medi Mediguru. Okay, I'll leave that to you to uh, correct in Nigeria. He has been a guest lecturer on Islamic and Palestinian affairs at many universities in the UK, including, including Queen's University in Belfast. Dr. Dawood Abdullah will speak for about seven to eight minutes on breaking the cycle of violence. Over to you, Dr. Dawood. Thank you, Anas. One of the most striking placards I saw in the weeks of a protest and has stuck in my mind ever since, was one which said, we are not free in Palestine. Palestine is free in us. The world's eyes are opening. It was such a poignant statement to make, and I, I wanted to recall it tonight in the onset of my presentation. Because the world indeed has awakened to the reality of, of Israel's occupation and, and the apartheid state it has set up and the genocidal policies that have been pursued over the years and reached the, its climax uh, since October the 7th. You've heard from our colleague in the United States about the changes, you know, not only on the streets, uh, but within officialdom, in Congress, in the State Department, USAID, you know, people calling for a, a sense of, 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 of probity, of justice, you see, of, of balance, you know, and honesty in this matter. And, and, and this goes across the board through Europe and, and, and into Asia and, and Latin America. And in the Caribbean also, you, people have been marching and calling for, you know, a, a change on this question. The, the, the type of uh, protest we've seen emanating in all these countries uh, gives us an opportunity. It opens for us an opportunity to reverse, in, in some measure, what we have been seeing. And, I, and uh, my own view is that Israel, as, as, as an apartheid entity, as an occupying power, will not recover from, from, from the loss of faith uh, the, the loss of goodwill and support that it enjoyed in previous years. It has reached rock bottom. Rock bottom, it, 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 to turn this around now, it, it would be almost a, a miracle. So what do we do? Uh, I, we heard from South Africa. And it was very good of, of uh, our colleagues in the Cordoba Foundation to invite someone from South Africa. Because it, it, not only have they experienced apartheid, but they, they, they found a way to get out of it, to defeat it, to ensure that it was dismantled. And uh, they harnessed international support. They harnessed the support that came from across Africa, from Asia, from Europe. And it, it led to a point in 1974 when the United Nations actually suspended South Africa from the UN body. It suspended them. No one wanted to do business with them anymore because of those policies. And that, was, that only happened because of the, the broad international support that South Africa had at the time. And, and, and we must say to our brothers after tonight in South Africa to take the lead on this to harness the support that we see in, in, in Latin America, the countries that have called back the ambassadors, even in Central America, small countries like Belize, <laughs> cut ties with Israel. We have to, to harness this. You see, it is possible. 
to isolate and to 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 relegate this state, this rogue state, uh, to the status that it truly deserves. So that's my first point. Uh, the second point I want to make is on the question of law and accountability. And it is needed. It is it it, it is uh, incumbent. You see that that we take measures to to bring these the, these criminals, genociders, you know, who who prop genocide, to bring them to book. But uh, in my view, I I think that there has been a, a, an enormous amount of of emphasis on on the ICC. You see, and 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 the truth of the matter is. The ICC may not deliver, given the, the, the circumstances that, that surround its operation. If, if, if the ICC, if there was any promise in the ICC, a warrant would have been issued for Benjamin Netanyahu long ago, as they issued a, a warrant for, for Vladimir Putin. It, they didn't take a, a meeting in the, in the in, in, they didn't take think twice as it will to issue a, a warrant for, for for Putin, but in the case of Netanyahu, no one is 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 thinking along those lines. So my view is that we have to explore other avenues. I'm not saying that the ICC uh, it should be uh, um, dismissed in its entirety. But there are other measures that can be taken. Um, there's something, an example I saw in, 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 in Africa, uh, in Senegal, where the, a special court was, was set up in, in 2013 to try the former uh, Chadian dictator, uh, Hussein Habri. That tribunal was set up by the African Union and Senegal. Only. The USA wasn't involved, the Security Council wasn't involved, the EU wasn't in. And after three years, they, 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 they convicted his inhabitant for crimes against humanity, war crimes, rape, and all the other you know, atrocities, and sentenced him to, to uh, life imprisonment. So we don't have to depend on and, 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 and think that the only route we, we have to go down is through the ICC. We have to think about other mechanisms you know, that uh, are possible. And there was another precedent uh, in the case of, of Augusto Pinichet. When he came here in 1998, uh, the Spanish uh, judge, uh, 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 Baltazar Gusan, issued a warrant for his arrest and extradition to Spain for crimes. This is what we call uh, universal jurisdiction, that a country can try a war criminal from another country, even though the crime was not con uh, uh, committed in, in, in his own country. The crimes committed by Pinochet were not committed in, in Spain. They were committed in Chile, but the, 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 the the universal, the principle of universal jurisdiction gives every country the right to do this. So uh, uh, Pinochet only, oh, he only escaped because uh, Mrs. Mrs. Thatcher was still alive and he was a friend and, and so too was Reagan and they said he was sick and, and, and Mr. Jack Straw was in the, in the home office at the time and you know what, they sent him back to Spain, to, to Chile, to die. But uh, if there was, uh, was justice, uh, Pinochet would have been sent to Spain and, 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 st and stood trial there. So uh, um, it, there is a precedent. It, it can be done. And, and, and our legal colleagues, they must think, you know, must innovate, you know, and explore. Every, uh, leave no stone unturned, you know, because uh, 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 Palestine deserves it. After all the, the, the crimes, you see that, that, that when you listen to, to, to these people, uh, uh, you, you wonder what age they're living in. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, a few weeks ago, was quoting from the Bible, a book called Samuel, where he referred to the people as Amalek. So this book in the Bible says, go into, into Gaza and kill Amalek, kill all of them, Men, women, children, ass, camel, everything, kill them. And he was quoting that recently. 
as his forces were fighting in Gaza. So what does that tell you? It tells us that this, he, wants a, he wants a final solution to the Palestine, what they call the Palestinian problem. What they call the Palestinian problem. They came from Europe. You see, they came and they settled and they colonized. And now they want to ethnically cleanse the country of the indigenous people. We are familiar with this scenario. We've seen it in, 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 in the Americas. That's what they did to the indigenous people in South America and in Canada. They, they, when they couldn't exterminate them, what did they do? They put them on reservations. And this is what they want to do with the Palestinians, put them in enclaves in the West Bank, you know, which are effectively uh, uh, reservations. Uh, our duty, uh, our moral duty, uh, our, uh, our humanitarian duty uh, is, is, is to say uh, no to this. Uh, uh, we want an end to genocide. Uh, we want justice. And uh, uh, without it, there will be no peace. Thank you.